Hey there, folks. It's Matthew Seville here with SLRLounge.com and another weekly edit for you. Today's video is going to be the preparation of some time lapse images. Now I've got 687 raw photos here. And if I go from the develop module to the loop library uh, here, so I can show you that I've got two different folders. There's this sequence here uh, of these structures in the dark. Let me scroll through. You can see all these frames look almost identical until right about here when the moon comes out. And if I scroll through them really quick, you can see the stars rotate in the sky. The moon comes up. There's another time lapse dolly shadow here, unfortunately. Um, but this is the cool part of the time lapse right here when the moon comes out. So I need to edit all of these photos. And then here's the other sequence here. This was another moonrise where the moon is coming over the hill and just barely shining on this really cool landscape before, unfortunately, the sun starts to rise and it completely blows out this photo. So I'm not going to worry about this white blowout here. But what I am going to worry about is editing these photos so that they look cool, so that the whole sequence looks cool from this really dark shadow all the way until the uh, moon is shining on them. Same thing with this. I'm going to have to edit these photos so that, you know, these dark shadows look kind of cool. And then when the moon comes out and everything, uh, you get some really cool uh, transitions going on. Now, if you want to get really advanced, there are ways to edit all 335 photos in this sequence just slightly differently using software to kind of incrementally change the, uh, the editing for each and every file. And that's a little bit of an advanced technique that we'll get into later. But first, let's just demonstrate quickly how you would edit all of this stuff really quick and just export it as a JPEG and get it into a time-lapse movie. I'm actually editing all of this footage right now for the purpose of a review or lots of reviews that I'm doing on a bunch of time-lapse equipment that I've been using lately. So for example, this slight motion that you see here was done using a Revo slider that we got at SLR Lounge and a time-lapse Dolly Genie. That's its name, it's called the Genie. It's made by a really cool company named SERP out of New Zealand. And what I've done here is I've taken my camera, my D5300 Nikon. I've got my Tokina 11 to 16 millimeter 2.8 here. And you can see every single one of these images is the same exposure. 30 seconds at F2.8 and ISO 3200. So I take that camera, I mount it on top of the SERP Genie time-lapse dolly thingamajig. I have to call it a thingamajig because you'll see later in the review it's really really adaptable and it's basically the MacGyver of time-lapse tools. So I take that time-lapse genie and I mount it on top of the slider and then if necessary I mount that slider on top of my lightweight time-lapse tripods which right now I'm testing out the Photo Pro tripods which have always been a favorite of mine and the Obin carbon fiber tripod as well, which seems to be performing very well also. So keep an eye out for those reviews coming soon. And let's prep this footage for those reviews. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pick the image that I think, oh, hey, I think I found a shooting star. Is there a shooting star there somewhere? Maybe it was just a satellite that went over somewhere around here. Oh, there's lots of shooting stars. You'll see them. Oh, there it was right there somewhere, watch. Okay, I'm getting sidetracked. I want to edit the, all the photos, but I want to pick just this one because I feel like this is what the light is meant to be for this scene. This is what I really want the whole entire scene to look like. So I'm going to hit Control A to select all the photos in this, and I'm just going to try the preset system, the SLR Lounge preset system here. I want to do a light crush from the Vivid base presets, and that actually looks pretty awesome right out of the box. Maybe I could try a heavy crush if I want to get really dramatic. I think I like these shadows this way, but let's go over here and let's check out what it would do to this area where the whole entire place is uh, in deeper shadow. Yeah, see, I think maybe the light crush is a little bit smarter of an idea here. And then maybe I'll just boost up the shadows on all of them just a little bit. And again, I got to go back and forth between the dark shadowy frames 
and the bright moonlit i was about to say sunny the bright moonlit frames here this looks great the shadows are great in this the highlights are a little bit too hot in this so maybe i'll dial it down just a tiny bit but then again i'm going to go back to the very beginning of the sequence and check this out see what this looks like well this is very clearly underexposed in case you guys haven't been checking out the histogram over here this is completely in the left hand side of the histogram but i think i like it this way because when I go through this sequence and the moon comes out, well, you're going to have to wait to see the editing. You know, it's going to get brighter and it's going to look pretty cool this way. So I'm going to stick with this editing right here. The last thing I need to do, though, is just tweak the tint a little bit because I think it was off in camera. So let's try. Uh, I think I need plus something, maybe plus 10. That looks good. I'm going to hit enter. This whole entire scene to me is ready to go. So let's go to the other scene really quick. And just like the other sequence, I'm going to start with the end where the light is what I want it to be, the exciting part of the light. I'm going to hit control A again, and let's try the light crush again. Let's see what that does for me. This might be a bit much. I'm not sure. Let's try the regular vivid preset and see that actually looks a little bit better because it's a little bit more uh, natural looking. I do think, however, that like the other scene, this one needs a little bit more pink around the plus 10 range, maybe plus 9 or something. I could also dial down the temperature to really make it a little bit more obvious that this was shot under moonlight and not like daylight with stars photoshopped in. That seems to be one mistake that people often make when they see the moon rise during a nighttime time lapse. They think, wow, did the sun come up? How are the stars still visible? Well, that's just the moon shining very, very brightly. Maybe let's go down on the tint just a little bit more. I like this right here. This looks great. Let's check the beginning of the sequence or the dark part of the sequence and see how that looks. Ooh, I really ha like how the sky looks in this shot. The uh, structures in the foreground are unfortunately almost completely invisible. So maybe I'll do a little bit of shadow and black boosting. Nope, I think I went too far. This crop sensor camera at ISO 3200 just does not have the shadow detail. If I zoom in here, you can see it's getting really bad and it's starting to turn magenta. So I'm going to dial the shadows back down and I'm just going to let them be dark. On that note, I'm going to export these sets of images to JPEG, and then we'll see how they look. Oh, first, I need to crop these to a 16 by 9 ratio, because that is what you are going to be working with when you do a 1080p uh, video frame. So I'm going to crop this one up, because I want to get that uh, time-lapse dolly out of the frame as much as possible. And let's hit G and go to this other scene and see what we should crop here. This one, uh, let's see here, 16 by 9. Unfortunately, I hate to lose these stars, but I feel like the foreground is really the cool part of this time lapse. So I'm going to just crop a little bit downward here. Oh, I didn't select all. I mean, hit, hit Control A, and all I got to do is wiggle this crop a little bit, and it will auto sync to all the others because I have auto sync turned on. Now let's go back to the other one and make sure that I applied this crop to every single image. Yes, I did. And there we go. Let's export this. I'm going to hit Control A and then Shift Control E or Command Control E if you're on a Mac. And let's select our folder here, the time lapse frames. Usually I want to put them in a subfolder that organizes them. So I'm just going to say time lapse one. And then what we need to do is set the JPEG quality all the way to 100, resize on the long edge to 1920 because that's what uh, HD is, 1920 by 1080. The resolution doesn't matter. I like to do sharpen for screen high. I like to not have a watermark on my time lapses. And the metadata doesn't matter, so let's click export. Now, once this is done, I'm going to hit G and go to the other scene. I'm going to hit Control A, Shift Control E, bring that up. And all I got to do is change this to time lapse 2 and hit Enter. And it'll export both of these sets of time lapses to a JPEG. Now, I usually use uh, my personal computer as a Mac. And there's a program on that computer that is, I believe it's a free program or one of those 10 or $20 programs, and it will just dump all of these JPEGs into an MP4 or an MOV file or whatever you want really quickly. It's a very simple program so that you don't have to mess around with the very expensive and very complicated programs like Final Cut or Premiere or whatever. 
And once we get these exported, I will show you what all of those frames come together to be in a video. And I can't remember the name of the program right now, but I will put that below. And you guys can check that out. All right, here's the video clips. Enjoy. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and take care. We'll see you next time.